All right, for our example problem, we're going to take a look at Kilauea. Kilauea in Hawaii is the world's most continuously active volcano. Very active volcanoes characteristically eject red-hot rocks and lava rather than smoke and ash. Suppose a large rock is ejected from the volcano with a speed of 25 meters per second at an angle 35 degrees above the horizontal, as shown below. The rock strikes the side of the volcano at an altitude 20 meters lower than its starting point. We're asked to calculate the time it takes the rock to follow this path, and then the magnitude and direction of the rock's velocity at impact. We've been given a diagram below, and on the next slide, I'll begin breaking down this problem uh, using the DeGessa problem solving process. So since we've already been given a diagram, let's go ahead and analyze our given information. And whenever I do projectile motion problems, I like to think about my given information in the x direction and my given information in the y direction. And then perhaps any information that um, I'm not maybe sure what direction it falls under. That's fine too. So let's see, we're given the initial velocity of the rock. Now it's important to note that this is velocity at an angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that in here. This is a velocity vector. It has got a magnitude of 25 meters per second and the direction is 35 degrees above the horizontal. This is my V initial, but this is not my V initial in the Y or the X. It is at an angle, and so I cannot use this as it is, right? I'm going to need to break this vector into components to be able to actually use this for problem solving, okay? So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Um, we see that this is a velocity vector on the right-hand side here that can be split up into an X component like so, initial velocity in the x, and then a y component like this. And uh, hopefully you're comfortable with this. If you're not comfortable breaking vectors into components, please go back and watch the previous video about vector components. So uh, because I'm given the angle right here, I know that cosine of 35 degrees will be my x component divided by 25 meters per second, meaning that my initial velocity in the x direction will be 25 cosine 35 degrees. And then by the same logic, my initial velocity in the y direction will be 25 sine 35, same process. So we'll go ahead and write that out on the left-hand side here. I know that my initial velocity in the x is actually just going to be my velocity in the x. I don't even need to write initial velocity. Um, remember, it doesn't change. So this is going to be 25 cosine 35 the entire time. But my initial velocity in the y direction, because this one does change, is 25 sine of 35 degrees. Okay, so I've got that information down. Um, I'm also given that the rock strikes the side of the volcano at an altitude 20 meters lower. And so if I look at this up here, I'm actually given the displacement is negative 20 meters. So delta y is negative 20 meters. It's really important to keep in mind that this is negative because we've defined in our problem statement, right? We've defined that up and right are positive directions, which means that down and left are negative directions. So if something is ending up lower than where it started, it should have a negative displacement, right? Its position is lower or more negative than it was at the beginning. All right. Um, I always know that my initial or my acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We always know that. Um, I know that my my acceleration, excuse me, in the x direction is zero. So I know I can omit that term. Um, and I don't think I'm given any more information. So let's go ahead and take a look at our equations and see which ones we can use to solve. I've gone ahead and copied those down below here. Now, uh, let's see, I'm looking for the time. So I want t. I'm going to go ahead and circle the thing that I want here. I want this guy. Okay. Now, this first equation, I know delta y. I know my initial velocity in the y direction, and I know my acceleration in the y direction as well. Okay, this one looks like a good one. Um, let's see if the other ones would work out as well. Um, I don't know the final velocity in the y direction. Remember, it's not zero because we're not at the maximum height, so can't use that one. And that rules out the last one as well. Okay, so if I were to use that first equation, I'm actually going to rearrange for t before I plug in values. So that would look like 1 half ay t squared plus viy t minus delta y 
is equal to zero. I know I'm gonna have to solve a quadratic here, so I'm getting it in standard form first. One half times negative 9.8 would give us negative 4.9 t squared. I just approximated that one half a y. This will be plus 25 sine 35 degrees minus a negative 20 meters. Okay, be careful, the minus sign is not part of the delta y. In this case, my delta y is negative, so it's minus a negative. That will give me negative 4.9 t squared plus 25 sine 35 degrees plus 20 will be equal to zero. Okay, oh, I forgot my t somewhere. There it goes. <laughs> my t disappeared. Okay, uh, so now that I have my quadratic, I know that I'm in standard form. I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. My a is negative 4.9. My b, in this case, is 25 sine 35 degrees. And my c value is 20. In this case, I'm going to approximate b as 14.339. Again, keeping as many decimal places as possible, just for calculation. So I'll show my quadratic formula here negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And then plugging in values, that would be negative 14.339 plus or minus negative 14.339 squared minus 4, negative 4.9 times 20. And just to check, this will be a positive value here. This will also be positive, so my determinant will be positive. Good. Checks out. And that'll all be over 2 times negative 4.9. Now, uh, I'll put that into my calculator, and I will get two roots for the time. So time could be equal to negative 1 second or 3.96 seconds. And obviously, in this case, this negative 1 second is ridiculous, and we can disregard that root. Essentially, what that's telling you is that this object would also have been at this elevation, so right here on my diagram, negative one second before it was launched. But that, again, that has no physical meaning. The equation doesn't know that it didn't start at that uh, elevation, that it ends lower. And so it actually only ever reaches that elevation at one point, and that is after 3.96 seconds. So my time is 3.96 seconds. That's how long it takes the rock to reach that point. Okay, now the last part of this question asks for the magnitude and direction of the rock's velocity at impact, which might sound like a strange question. Um, let's draw the velocity vector at the very end of the rock's trajectory. It would look something like this, it shows in the diagram. So this is my velocity final, right, at the very end. Um, and we can represent that as also the sum of two components. I'll show my x component in here. This is my vx. Again, vx is the same vx as it was at the beginning. We know that never changes, so I'm just going to show that as vx. And then this would be my vfy. I don't know my vfy. So in order to solve for the magnitude and direction of vf, essentially what we're being asked to do is solve for the resultant vector of these two components. So I know, right, I already know my vx. My vx is the same thing as it was at the beginning, it's always the same. And that's going to be 25 cosine 35 degrees. So I'm already halfway there. I just need VFY, right? Because I already know that my resultant vector, VF, I can solve using the Pythagorean theorem, right? That would be my VFY squared plus VX squared. So if I had VFY, then I could solve this problem. Now, let's see how we can get VFY, right? I already know a couple things. Um, if I go back to my previous equations. So I see I have two equations that have VFY in them. I've got this one and this one. Uh, this one looks a little bit simpler. So I think I'll go ahead and use that one. But you could use either. Um, so if I were to use this equation, then that would give me something that looks like this. VFY is equal to my initial velocity in the y direction, which if I go back to the previous slide, is 25 in this case, we used sine 35 degrees. And that will be plus my negative 9.8 meters per second squared times my time, which I just got in the previous step, 3.96 seconds. Plugging all that in, my final velocity in the y direction is 
negative 24.5 meters per second, where again, the negative sign is just confirming what I already know, that this velocity vector is pointing downwards, okay? So I'll go back to my uh, VF equation over here on the left. That will give me that VF is the square root of VFY squared, which I know is negative 24.5 squared plus VX was this 25 cosine 35 degrees squared. So putting all that into my calculator, I will get a final velocity of 31.9 meters per second. So there's my magnitude. I'm not done though, I do need the direction still. And so if this again is my theta, then I'll go ahead and show that um, over here on, uh, on this side. Then I know that tangent of theta is going to be that VFY over my VX, which will be negative 24.5. And again, I'm going to omit the negative. Whenever you do the angle, just omit the negative. You've already captured that with the direction of the vector. Over my X, which is 25 cosine 35 degrees, so that theta is tangent inverse of this whole thing. Just stuff that in here. <laughs> so that means that theta will be equal to 50.1 degrees. And it's important to note that in this case, we're not really dealing with compass directions. Um, we're not going to deal with north, south, east, and west. But I, what I would say, right, is that this is 50.1 degrees, and I would say below the horizontal in this case. We're just referencing, um, you know, where it is on the horizontal. So I would say that the final answer is 31.9 meters per second at 50 Point one degrees below the horizontal. And there you have it. Now this was quite an involved problem, but you should feel comfortable solving problems like this. Um, by this time in the course, this is sort of a culmination of everything that we've learned so far. So if you can do these problems, then you can do anything we've done so far. All right, please go ahead and begin doing the application exercises on Canvas. And once again, please let me know if you have any questions or concerns about this process. Thank you.